Look, we've got to talk. But before we do, I need to show you this clip from CNN last night. Because while everyone who voted Republican in the 2016 elections has been patting themselves on the back over the possibility of a red wave, we ended up in a situation which has completely empowered the democratic socialists of America. And how's it happening? Well, let me just give you a show. Let me show you exactly what's going on. Come People on. stop requiring. Oh, God, I'm just fucking everything up today. I'm sorry, guys. One more second. There we go. Let us. Congresswoman Waters to behave in one point is very simple. I demand that people stop requiring Congresswoman Waters to behave in one way while everybody else can do something else. Nancy Pelosi says, make, let's make America beautiful again. Whose America is she talking about? Steve, at the beginning of this program, said, this isn't America. This isn't what, what America are you talking about? Childish Gambino artfully told you what America is and what it looks like. Let's deal with the distinctions that we all see, because some of us see a very different America. The fact that Chuck Schumer way, called what a black woman said, un-American is problematic. And this is the reason why Democrats but have a hard time reuniting the base. Can you not say that just because the of the color of her skin? It has everything What's... to do with the fact that this black woman is intimidating to some people who can't handle the truth. That's what it has. It has everything it to, do has to do with it. It has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with it. So what are you saying? You wouldn't have said it to a white person? Watch what you wish for, Max. He, Donald Trump responded the, the, to that. Come on, Aaron. There's there's time and time again we can look at Donald Trump's tweets. He's intimidated by Jamel Hill. He's intimidated by Frederica Wilson. He's intimidated by Maxine Waters. Overwhelmingly and disproportionately so, it has everything to do with race. And, and, and that is why well, I this. find Chuck as, Schumer's as, as, comments as this... deplorable and offensive. It's un-American why. Okay. It's un-American why. Steve, because what America it... are you talking about? This is America of lynch mobs, too. Like, let's be very clear. And she as, didn't call for right. violence. Donald Trump did. Steve, I'll give you the, the last word as Angela as, had the first. As, as a Hispanic and as a minority, I will tell you that Donald Trump uh, not only has our best, best interests at heart, uh, but has That's absolutely zero, zero semblance of racism in his heart. Um, <laughs> and I will tell you so this, too. Bad. The idea that we, we don't fight... If the fight is about policy, which I'd like it to be, the way that we fight on policy is through words, is through persuasion. It's not through mob rule. It's not through thuggery. And that's what we've seen lately. And by but, the way, particularly targeted against words. women who support Donald Trump, which I find very interesting. So a lot of thuggery where people show up, thuggery. intimidate, harass, menace. That's right. not persuasion. Let's 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 negotiate in the public square through our words. You know, it's something we tell little children, right? Like, right. don't lash out. Well, Use your word. That right there, that right there is the midterms in a nutshell. If you think for one second that we're just going to skate on through and have a red wave, you've got another fucking thing coming. Were you Point watching? Very like, simple. Shut up, shut I up, shut up. Mute. Were you watching the news last night? Because I don't know if you noticed, but that clip captured everything, and that was before Alexandria Ocasio or Cortez won the primary, unseating Joe Crowley, a 14-year veteran of the House of Representatives. But let's break down Angela Rye in that uh, clip first, because I want you to understand exactly where we stand. One of the first things she said there was that she demands people stop requiring waters to behave in one way while everyone else can do something else. While on our side of the fence, we see what she's doing is absolutely reprehensible. The socialist Democrats, the socialists in this country, are not only in full support of her, they want more of that. They want mob rule. They want to attack people that they consider racist because they want revenge for lynchings. They want this to keep happening. So the younger party, this is what she means by what America are you talking about? Because there are two Americas. It's not two Americas, though. It's two Democratic parties. 
the corporate Democrat, the corporatist Democrats who are just shitting on everything they touch right now. And the democratic socialists who are picking up the young and middle-aged votes in droves. What we're looking at right now is minority groups in the United States moving in two very different directions. They're either like the walkaway campaign or those who support Candace Owens and Kanye West moving to support Trump or, and this is actually much larger when it comes to university campuses and the like, you have people who support Frederica Wilson, Maxine Waters, Alexandria um, Ocasio-Cortez, Summer Lee, and these are names I'm going to get into further in the show, which are so far left, they would make Joseph Stalin blush. No, what we're looking at is race becoming the topic that is destroying the Democratic Party, tearing it limb from limb. People who are sticking with the Democratic Party right now aren't fucking voting for corporatist Democrats. They're sick and tired of them. They think they're racist, as very plainly shown in that clip right there, and everywhere across the mainstream media right now. Pay very close attention to what's going on, because the blue wave is going to end up looking very, very red. Not because of Republicans, but because of socialists. And there is a strong, strong possibility that these socialists are going to cause such an upset that the DNC has no choice but to back them. But those who aren't sticking with the Democratic Party, they're coming over to the Trump side. They're moving over to the populist side, the libertarian side, because they want freedom and they don't want to be told how to think. Did you notice the utter discomfort of the CNN political commentator throughout that clip? Just how uncomfortable she was right up into the moment where she had to say something that up until this point, we've only heard Republicans saying on the news. Oh, are you not only, are you only not allowed to say that because of her race? The Democrats have fucked the pooch on this one. The corporatist Democrats, that is. The people who fund CNN, NBC, uh, these news outlets are screwed on that point because they keep making that same mistake. Nancy Pelosi standing against Maxine Waters and Maxine Waters' call for mob justice against the Trump administration may look good to us, may look like weakness on the part of the corporate Democrats, but that weakness in the corporate Democrats only gives unlimited room for growth within the socialist Democrats. And last night, with the victory that was seen, and across the last month or two, with the victories seen by the Democratic Socialists of America, they are emboldened. They are emboldened in the way that Trump supporters were emboldened in 2016. Now, look at the, and at the end of that video, she talks about mob rule and thuggery. Or excuse me, the, uh, the Republican guy on the, said, he, you know, we cannot rule this country by mob rule and thuggery. And her immediate response was to just, there's more buzzwords. They don't care about politics. They care about winning exactly the same way that Trump supporters care about winning. And that is the thing we have to fear the most right now. And the reason why Republicans have no room to be complacent. Now, in order to get what they want, special interest groups are attacking their own party, the Democratic Party, because it looks good. It looks great on television to have this w person of color kicking two white people's asses, Democrat and Republican, on national television and emboldening all of those under the age of 35 who are staunch democratic socialists, Bernie bros, and the like. And likewise, even the mainstream media is embroiled by this collapse of the illusion of unity that the Democrats have hold, held. The Democrats aren't united. It's been an illusion maintained by the DNC's, call it media political complex, with 
CNN, MSNBC, etc. They've maintained this illusion and that illusion has been shattered. There is no doubt on the left or the right that the Democratic Party is fracturing, but it's not going to disappear. It's not going to just fall out of use. It's going to become the voice piece, the mouthpiece for the Democratic Socialists of America. Take, for example, the winner last night of the, uh, of the uh, New York 14th District in the House. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Remember that name because she's the one who has moved the party from old corporatist Democrats to young Democratic Socialists. This is a 28-year-old woman who was born and raised in the Bronx and took the seat in her home district with a 10% margin. She last night created the biggest upset in politics since the election of Trump, and that is nothing to scoff at. I may disagree with her politics, which we'll get into in a moment, completely, but the fact that she was able to unseat a Democratic, uh, excuse me, a corporatist Democrat who had 10 times the money that she had for her campaign is astounding. It shows that money is no longer the deciding factor because the socialists don't care how much you advertise. They care that you put up or shut up. They care that you put on the show that they want to see, kicking the ass of what they perceive as racists, kicking the ass of what they see as establishment bastards who have just let things continue as normal. And remember, these are people who believe wholeheartedly in the racism of America. These are people who wholeheartedly believe that they are an oppressed class. So pandering to that, and not only pandering, but actually believing the same as them, is worth hundreds of times more than any campaign contributions can be. Now, this woman was an organizer for the Bernie Sanders 2016 presidential election campaign. Not only was this about making change for herself, for her it was personal when it came to corporatist Democrats because she saw firsthand the DNC tear apart the party in order to rig the election against Bernie Sanders in the primaries. She had to do what she did in honor of the Democratic Socialists who were completely fucked over by the Clinton-loving bastards in the DNC. And what's her platform? Well, her platform is Bernie Sanders plus plus. She wants Medicare for all. She wants a federal jobs guarantee. Now that's a phrase we haven't heard in a long time, pretty much that the federal government is going to ensure right to work and right to maintain your job. Not the kind of right to work that people from states like Virginia and Ohio would think, but rather a job security enforced by the federal government. This is her position. Tuition-free public college She's standing on that gem that screwed over Bernie Sanders in the Democrat in the uh, in the primaries, and instead of fucking her, because her constituency is young, it worked entirely in her favor. Let's not forget, mind you, that we're not dealing with a presidential national election. We're dealing with elections that are entirely built and structured out of gerrymandered districts. Districts that have been cut and reshaped to fit in demographics including age, race, sex, etc., family size, wealth. These groups, the Democratic Party and their support of gerrymandering, have essentially made it super easy, have made it painless for the socialists to come in and kick out as many corporatist Democrats as they want. She's also stood since May for the abolition of immigration and customs enforcement. You know, that issue that all of us think is completely stupid? Well, I hate to tell you this, but the young college-age people in this country 
the voting block that people don't normally see voting are now going to be voting in full force against racism in the form of abolishing Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. Even though they're all so stupid to believe that Immigrations and Customs Enforcement are the people that are actually dealing with these people once they're in the country and being processed. They don't even know who ORR are. Instead, they're putting the blame on our border security forces. And they are going to hurt themselves in the long run, but get elected in the short run on this platform. She's also for the ending of privatized prisons and raising the minimum wage to $15. In other words, her platform is gimme, 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 gimme. And as disgusting as that might be to you, as disgusting as that might be to me, that is exactly what the disenfranchised socialist youth of this country want to hear. Don't be stupid. We are not going to just coast through this midterm election season without challenges. Our challenges are so much worse than corporate Democrats because they don't need money. They have believers. Absolute fucking die-hard believers. Pay attention, pay close attention, because it's not just Alexandria Ocasio Ortiz, and it's not just the Democratic Socialists of America. Ocasio Ortiz, as well as a few others that I'm going to mention in just a moment, were all supported and endorsed by Move On, a democratic socialist organization who wants specifically to unseat the corporatist Democrats. The Justice Democrats movements, who, if you're familiar with the YouTube political communities, was founded by Cenk Uger of the, uh, of the uh, Young Turks and Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk. This is going to be the first time in ever that the Democratic Party is dominated by secularists instead of people who pay lip service to both the seculars and the religious left, the, the, uh, the uh, Catholics. We are seeing a stark deviation. But not only were they endorsed by the YouTube political sphere, they were also endorsed by Black Lives Matter, who I don't think I need to tell you anything about and Democracy for America. These endorsements tell me one thing. They are all for violence against those who they perceive as racist. Violence for thee, not for me, is their mantra because they want to see us hurt. They want to see us torn down because they believe in their heart of hearts that we are racist monsters who want to keep them enslaved. Now, that couldn't be further from the truth, obviously. But at the same time, we need to pay fucking close attention to these people. But the Democratic Party isn't only being upset by Ocasio-Cortez. The Democratic Party is being torn apart, segmented and divided in these run-ups to the elections in the same way that the Republicans looked completely divided and separated in the run-up to the presidential election, with the difference being, again, gerrymandering works far more in the favor of these Democrats, of these minority groups, of these special interest groups. While the neocons, libertarians, and traditionalists were completely willing to put aside their differences and put up a united front for the sake of fighting the Republicans, the left isn't going to be able to do that. The left is going to take way too long to pivot because they are a monolithic force being torn apart by a minority who can steal the youth votes, the socialist votes, the California votes, all of these things. California's lost. California is going to go full-blown fucking socialist, except for in maybe uh, 10 or less, maybe like six of the congressional districts in California. 
and we're going to see the exact same pattern over and over and over. Ocasio-Cortez won her primary with one-tenth of the money of her incumbent corpus Democrat opponent, Joe Crowley. He had $3 million prepared for the primaries alone, whereas Ocasio-Cortez had $300,000. Insignificant in comparison, and yet more than enough to carry her 10 points over the line against the predictions of the polls. Polls that at this point are worthless because they're just as biased as they were during the presidential election of 2016. Not only that, but she's not the only person to be taking over a seat as a member of the Democratic Socialists of America. In and around Pittsburgh, there were two uh, unchallenged seats for the Democrats in which a special election primary was held back in May. And this led to a very, very specific problem. One that everyone should have seen coming once it happened, but everyone else completely ignored. Summer Lee and, oh God, what's her name? Um, Sarah Inamorato of Pittsburgh ran for the 21st and 34th district in Pennsylvania and beat out their incumbents. And with no Republican to challenge them in the general election, they're going to win in a landslide. The same can be said for the, uh, the Montana 6th. The same can be said for the 1st to 5th of Minnesota. What we're looking at is a huge upset of the Democratic Party not being completely destroyed, but upended and overtaken by the Democratic Socialists. The blue wave predicted by the mainstream media is taking on a form no one thought it could, with, with it looking extremely red, not because of the Republicans, but because of the Socialists who are taking over the party. The DNC has no choice at this point, seeing the way things are going, but to put their money behind uh, Democratic Socialists and the Democratic Socialists of America in order to even survive this election season, in order to not become a bygone conclusion, because despite the fact that they're in horrific debt being held up by Hillary Clinton, Supporting Hillary Clinton and being for Hillary Clinton is just as bad on the Democrat side now as it was for the Republican side two years ago. But here's the important part that I think needs to be said. We cannot get complacent. We cannot just expect the red wave to carry us to a supermajority. That would be extremely stupid. Yes, walk away by US, uh, at US Minority on Twitter is a brilliant movement. And it's bringing people to the right in support of Trump, in support of people that Trump has come out in support of during this election season. But again, as I said towards the beginning, that is not the direction everyone's going, especially the younger Democrats, the minority groups, who are not disenfranchised by the mistakes of the Democratic Party, but emboldened by the bravery shown by Maxine Waters and Frederica, um, what's her name, Frederica uh, Wilson. Uh, these politicians who are calling for mob attacks on Republicans and administration officials are getting more out of this than people recognize because they're they're interviewing corporatist democrats died in the dirt democrats who were on hillary's side of the blue fence rather than bernie's side they're not talking to bernie bros they're not talking to college students and if they were they'd see that the numbers are way different than they think nancy pelosi has a huge problem on her hands and it's not Chuck Schumer. 
It's the fact that she could lose her power position in the Senate like that. There are 39 seats up for debate in the Senate. Every single seat in the House of Representatives is up for, uh, up for auction. 39 gubernatorial positions are up for votes. And we are going to see the most socialists in this country since the 19 fucking 50s, folks. Don't get complacent. Don't sit there with your head up your ass. We're going to win, 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 but we're going to have to fucking fight for it. Don't believe me? Just wait. Just watch. We're getting there, and it's extremely important that you pay attention. Uh, Otakin Green Moon asks, did the left learn to meme? No, but that does not mean that the mimetic nature of their hatred and vitriol and their religious adhe adherence to fighting against racism and promoting intersectionality isn't going to carry them in the same way that our memes have carried us in the recent past. It's a different kind of meme, more in line with Catholic memes than uh, 4chan memes, but oh god, is it working for them. There are not enough Republicans in the blue districts that are in greatest risk to fight against these socialists. All because the Republicans and the Democrats alike agreed to give the Democrats in these districts the large, impoverished minority groups and take for themselves the wealthy independents uh, and the Republicans taking for themselves the wealthy independents. States like Washington, Michigan, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Florida, and New Mexico are entirely up for grabs right now. And if the Democratic Socialists even win 30 of the available House seats in those states, the House of Representatives will at best remain the same and at worst block out the supermajority so many Republican voters are patting themselves on the back about before it has even happened. I keep saying it, but I'm going to say it again and again and again. Don't get complacent. The Socialists are coming. They have Hollywood on their side. They have the Starbucks socialists in San Francisco on their side. And now they have most of New York on their side. New York being where news is reported from. These coastal elites and their desire to... Because they're not just... Because unlike the coastal elites who were pandering to minority groups in the Democratic Party across the last 40 years, these socialist par these democratic socialists are genuine believers. They believe wholeheartedly and they're going to win, win, win against the Democrats. It's up to us to assure that they don't turn this country into a fight between socialists and libertarians. Or maybe it is. Maybe that will be a better option. I don't know. You tell me. <clears throat> Otakin says, I'm seeing the same things that Scott Adams is seeing. Well, I'm glad to hear that other people are seeing this because it's extremely important to remain aware. The Scott Adams talks about persuasiveness a lot, and that's actually an extremely important topic in this subject because it is extremely persuasive in the impoverished minority groups to show that kind of aggressiveness, downright willing to be violent, to fight for what you believe in. That persuades the youth, college and college-aged uh, voters, or voting-age people in our country to vote far more than going out and getting some rapper to sing a vote or die song. Vote or die, motherfucker, vote or die. They don't care about that. They don't want to be mocked. They want to see people as angry as they are, and they're getting that. 
and Maxine Waters is running the show. If Maxine Waters isn't censured by the House of Representatives, she has every possibility of becoming the Speaker of the House in an upset in which socialists take over the Democratic Party in this country and eke out a few extra seats in the midterms. We're not going to see a, a supermajority of Republicans in the midterms. We're not going to see a supermajority of Democrats either. But remember, midterms always go against the sitting incumbent presidents. The odds are so much more for the Democrats picking up a few seats and doing so with Democratic socialists who are just outright socialists and give little fucks about direct, indirect, or Republican democracy. No, they just want what they can get from us. They just want to treat our citizenry as incompetent, weak people who need the support of the government. Gimme, gimme, gimme is all they're saying. And gimme, gimme, gimme is going to save their platform. You're right, I'm angry. I'm angry because all I see is the left bragging and getting their hopes up before even one primary has been won by a Republican. Things are not looking good for the Republican Party. But everyone's looking past that because the Republican Party has always been a divided and uh, diverse group of minds. The Republican Party is not a singular monolith. It's always run on lower finances because of the independents, the, uh, uh, the libertarians, and the populists. It's only because of the neocons that, the, that over the last 30 years, the Republican Party has held most of the more wealthy individuals. It wasn't like that back in the 60s. The Republicans were well-spoken and they certainly were doing well for themselves financially. But just like now, most of the people who were running the largest companies were Democrats. Most of the racists at the same time were Democrats. And these Democratic Socialists are calling bullshit on the Democratic Party, just like their walk away and Candace Owens slash Kanye West following uh, counterparts. They're calling bullshit on the Democratic Party because they know that the Democratic Party is using them. These corporatists in the Democratic Party are collapsing harder than the neocons did in 2007. The question is, how far are they going to fall and how much is that going to be replaced by socialists. Are there any more questions in the audience? Because I've still got a little bit more time and energy, but it is getting hot, so I'm going to have to cut things short. Uh, just going through the chat again, uh, Otakeen, closer to the beginning of the show, asked, are we seeing the Bernie Bros going extreme? Uh, this is worse than the Bernie Bros. The Bernie Bros are acting in a manner that is subservient to the minorities that they see as endlessly oppressed and subclassed. So the Bernie Bros are not going to be Bernie Bros anymore. They're going to be minority supporting socialists like they always were. And the phrase Bernie Bros isn't going to matter. None the least of which because the Bernie Bros were poached by Trump's populist movement within the Republican Party. And again, pay close attention because the Republican Party isn't a monolith either. We still have neocons. We still have war hawks, rhinos, Republicans in name only. We can be offset by this very division. And I don't even consider myself a, a core and died in the dirt Republican. No, I'm an individualist at heart, right of center. 
I believe in liberty and individual rights more than anything else. The freedom to be yourself without government intervention, without the need for a government to hold your hand through everything. That's not the Republican Party as a whole. More and more it's becoming that, but they're going to keep the name Republican nonetheless, something I disagree with quite wholeheartedly. It doesn't look like we've got any other questions though. Thank you all for coming out. You guys are such magnificent fucks, and I love you. I will see you next time. Mwah.